seven o'clock, we'll call this meeting to order. So you please rise for the pledge of the flag. Anita, she's taping it for us. It will be on our Comcast Channel 6, also on YouTube, NEMC TV 6. So if anybody's not here and wants to hear what's going on at the meeting, watch it. If you'll be on TV, you can watch yourself. <laughs> okay. Like I said, the deputy's a little late. So I also have Dan Turk here from China Township. They started the Neighborhood Watch program, when was that, last fall? Yeah, about a year ago. About a year ago. So I'll have him explain what he did, what works and what didn't work. So the sheriff gets here and then we'll go on from there. Uh, I will limit my walking because of my muddy boots, of course, but I'm also China Township's clerk. And we started this about a year ago. And the reason why we started, we started to have an influx of the breaking and enterings, just like you folks are seeing in your recent months. I think we kind of dispersed or disseminated some of the groups that were collated inside our area to the outside communities. You guys are not alone in your fears and concerns. There's also Cotterville Township that's grouped together as well. But as we, we started to put this together, more and more people just like your folks got together and we had some true success stories come out of our, our township. One of them was uh, close to December time period last year. Uh, this happened on McKinley Road. Uh, there were several break-ins from house to house where they actually used one of the guy's wheelbarrow to bring all the goods out to a particular vehicle as the getaway. Well, one of the women that lived on that road happened to work like at Providence Hospital and she uh, she had to leave relatively early in the morning, by 2 o'clock in the morning. So she comes all the way back, and meantime, there's sheriffs among other houses and all this commotion, curious what's going on. And she asks one of the sheriffs, what, what happened? She says, well, there was a number of break-ins. She says, wow. She says, I did see a suspicious vehicle early this morning. She says, did you get a license plate number? Well, of course, that's what they tell us to do at Neighborhood Watch. Not only did she get the license plate number, the description of the vehicle, within a half hour, the police were at these people's residence and got every belonging that was stolen and the people apprehended it up in the St. Clair County Jail. So I, it does work. For years, me growing up in a rural area, every, everybody knew each other. Nowadays, I have a very hard time telling Whose neighbor's car is whose? Because they all look alike every day. We, we can all agree to that. And this is what criminals count on. They're counting on you not talking to each other because then they can operate. If you folks have not joined onto the next door uh, website, I'm sure Wayne will, will help fill you guys in it. This is how we operate in China Township and helps us as a success story. Myself, I had to go to an MTA meeting. This would have been in Kalamazoo. I would have to say it was in February, and we had a barn repairman working at my place. Just in my absence, a few neighbors seen a strange vehicle in my driveway. I got four hits on that, saying, hey, you know there's a strange vehicle in your driveway. And that's, that's neighbors looking out for each other. If you take a look at national crime safety statistics, they say 65% of crime in rural areas goes unreported. 25% gets reported, and 10% gets followed up, and maybe there's a lead behind it. Who is the blame on that? You are and I am. We have the best problem solvers and puzzle solvers that money could pay for, the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department. The tiniest bit of information that you may think is insignificant may be the clue they're looking for to break a case. 
Everybody needs to be always constantly vigilant, getting license plate numbers, descriptions of drivers, color of vehicle, and report it on the non-emergency line if it is not an emergency. Like I said, that may be a clue what these folks are looking for. Now, in, in our round table of Neighborhood Watch, we usually go around from person to person and, and ask what kind of crime that you may have seen in yours. And I'm sure you guys up and down, I believe, was it Meltrum Road here that we've had the influence well, of? Weisner Road, we had some. Of, of these problems. And I'm sure they're linked. Our problems inside China Township were circled by two individual crime rings, which now we have a detective working on them as well. They work covert. Uh, usually they do a hit on a Friday and Saturday night and morning hours obviously everybody finds out what happened. And it's primarily tools. They are not taking cash or jewelry and they're obviously pawning them. So uh, what are they doing with it? Well, you could almost think any kind of nefarious actions and the biggest thing, drugs. And with Neighborhood Watch, not only are we looking out for crime, but we're also looking about the drug problems that are, are circling in our area. Did you know that in St. Clair County alone, with the meth and heroin addictions, we're having three to four deaths a day. In Macomb County, it's the, the nine to 12 deaths a day. In areas like Columbus, Ohio and Cincinnati, which you wouldn't think Ohio would be any kind of an area where drug influx is, there are so many corpses in the in the morgues they have to have refrigerated truck trailers outside to handle the, these these deaths now wayne as as he keeps on carrying on these these neighborhood watches he'll bring in people like brian's hope that for open toyed awareness the person you may least expect in your workplace or or family may be somehow hooked on this and you take a look at what they're cutting some of the heroin with now is a drug called fentanyl. And fentanyl is the most toxic drug that's out in the marketplace these days. Uh, in our neighborhood watch in China Township, we have a, a police officer that is uh, on the Hamtramck SWAT team. He shared a story that they, they went and did a drug raid and just opened one of the bags of fentanyl to test it, knocked two officers on the ground. And we have an officer right here. <laughs> and that's how bad it is. And, and, and we have our children, and it's not only our children. When I first started start first working with Senator Phil Pavlov and Representative Dan Lowers and Shane Hernandez on our St. Clair Highway Bridge, by the way, we did get the money for it. Thank God for that. Thank you. I, we, I followed him along to a bunch of various uh, town hall meetings, both of them because I, it was also announced next year, uh, in 2018, I'm running for the State House of Representatives in the 81st District. And in, in my following them, I tried to find the problems that were plaguing our community, and one of them being the, the drug addiction. And it was such of a broad form brush. Every time that I talked to a group, it went from people in, in trailer parks that were very low income to the best of incomes of $350,000 homes and from kids from ages 12 to people in their mid-50s and 60s. It covers all groups of people and all groups of life. On the bad part about the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department, when they do go into a drug raid or a drug bust, when they find anything that could be possibly that toxic, they got to go in in chemical suits. And you, 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 you can sign with that. In my talks with uh, Sheriff Tim Donnellan, he says, it's a horror, horror story. It's becoming a strong deficit. Years ago, when a drug bust would take place, any money that would be on the table, they could use to seize drug money. If it's become a cookhouse, it has to be bagged up, sent to the US Treasury, and possibly destroyed. So it's a loss. If, it, if a vehicle is used as a cook vehicle, can't be used and resold as, as a, a drug seizure vehicle, it has to be crushed and sold for salvage milk. So these are direct deficits that the budget of the St. Clair County Road Commission or St. Clair County Sheriff's Department was working on. So it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing plaguing our area. Talking to our, our legislators, I do believe we have an idea that it has come down from the top down. And what I mean by the top down, 
When anybody broke a finger, thumb, toe, leg, first thing the doctors prescribed was Oxycontin. And Oxycontin is believed to be the gateway to most of these heavy narcotics. It gives to the very similar high from what I'm told, but once they keep going back to this doctor, back to this doctor for this prescription, eventually they can't get it anymore, they start going to the street version of it. And that's where we're seeing our problems. Now as far as the state is concerned, it's, it's been a, a very touchy topic. What do we tag it as? Are we tagging it as an addiction or do we tag it as a disease? Because once we tag it as a disease, then the insurance companies are gonna be involved, clinics, long-term care, things like that. And it'll be, it'll be a horror story. But then again, we can't have our citizens dying either. So it's a double-sided story. So that's about all I have to say. Uh, I will stay here through your neighborhood watch and any questions, any problems, I'm sure I'll be able to assist Wayne with and, and, our, and our sheriff. <laughs> I've seen you once in our yeah, once before, before, so. <laughs> okay, well our sheriff showed up, so. Yep, like sorry to... I was a little bit late, was on a call, so I had to set up first, but. Um, I kind of got this the last minute, so mainly uh, if you guys got any questions, I'll answer those. I got a couple of some uh, statistics sheets one of our sergeants made up for you guys, so I can pull those up and we can kind of read some of those stats too. Um, let me get this thing going here first, sorry about that. <coughs> so, uh, robberies are up. Uh, our larcenies and burglary, or our larcenies are down, burglaries have went up a little bit. That kind of goes back to what you're saying. A lot of these property crimes we're getting, they're, they're due to the narcotics because people are stealing stuff so they can pawn it and go out and get their, get their fix. A lot of the stuff we're seeing right now is with them stealing stuff, it's people are leaving their cars unlocked. Uh, they're leaving their houses unlocked, unattended. People are seeing stuff, but they're not calling where we show up to the call and they're like, yeah, we saw a weird car in the driveway about three o'clock in the morning, but I didn't think anything of it. That's been our big problem. Um, not so much in this area, but some of the other small towns, uh, them breaking into cars has been way up and they're just going down a row, opening up, just checking every door. They're not breaking windows. They're looking for unlocked cars where they can get in there and get out, taking loose change, small items that they can get rid of really quickly. Um, our B and E's are down, but once again, the ones that are getting hit on those are they're hitting outbuildings, they're hitting barns, they're hitting sheds. Something they don't have to get through a locker, they can get through it very easily with a pair of bolt cutters. Uh, they're getting in and out with, once again, small lawn items, uh, weed whips, push lawn more, stuff like that. So kind of the big thing with us is if you see something, no matter how small it is or if you don't think it matters or whatever, still give a call. I'd rather go out there and it'd be nothing, some car broke down on the side of the road, than to not get a call and then get a call the next day that this guy broke into three houses in the neighborhood <coughs> and stole everything. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, other than that, let me get this other sheet up here. <coughs> Yeah, our calls for service, like I said, with our burglaries, uh, we've had six We've had six burglaries down here. They've all been no forced entry. So they're not forced entry. It's just they're getting into the building because they're unlocked. Uh, we have, uh, most of them run occupied buildings. We've had four of those. Uh, we've had one uh, B&E of a non-residence, like a, a vacant home where they're getting in and they're taking that stuff. Uh, that's kind of the big thing we're looking at for you know, our hardcore crimes down here right now are the burglaries. Uh, even though they're down a little bit this year, we're still getting quite a few. A lot of them are, when we're getting them, they're, they're groups of guys that are coming out of the cities. They're coming into these small towns. They know people are home, people have to work. They're going around, they're checking doors, they're knocking on doors. So if you get something like that where somebody knocks on your door and they're like, hey, I'm from DTE or something like that, I wanna check your meter. And they're just driving some plain old pickup truck and they go and take off as soon as you talk to them, mm -hmm. call us on that, because more than likely they're just driving around the neighborhood looking for somebody that's not home. So that's that's kind of our big ones down here right now, are the, the B&Es of the uh, residences. Um, any questions from anybody though? Yes, ma'am. Are, um, are most of the break-ins 
in the middle of the night or in the morning? Not necessarily. Uh, we're getting a lot of them in the early morning hours. We're getting some of them in the middle of the day when people are at work. Um, most of the ones we're looking at right now are ranging between like 3 a.m. all the way up to noon. It just depends. Uh, because they're, they're doing it one of two ways. They're either driving around looking for places that don't have any lights on where it doesn't look anybody's home. They're going over there, they're checking the sheds, they're getting what they can and they can get out. Mm -hmm. Or we're getting the other ones, which we haven't had one of these in a little while, but they have been down here where these guys are going, you know, door to door, checking houses, knocking on doors, seeing if anybody's home. And then if nobody's home, then they're, then they're breaking it, so, mm -hmm. yep. Now, I'm down here at Meldrum and I, well, I'm not working any longer, but, um, the time when I used to leave to go to work was about 5.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I used to see people coming down Meldrum and, and like they slow down at the end of my driveway after I pulled out. Yep, and that's the thing. But my see. husband was still home, so they okay. would have come because he left after me. But that's still one low. thing. If you yeah. see something like that, give us a call. Look in like your rear view mirror if you see something. I'd rather like check it and the person's just like, yeah, I live right down the road and I'm looking for my friend's house or something like that. And it winds up being nothing or later on, you know, it winds up being something. Yes, sir. A number of years, I live on Sinclair Highway. A number of years ago, my house got broken into on a late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. And a couple of your colleagues came out. And the first thing they asked me, they go, do you have a lot of money at the house? I said, no. What about guns? I go, no. They go, what about jewelry? I go, no. They said, well, you see a few, you know, TVs or stereos. And they said that was their priority, what they yeah, asked. Electronics always go quick because that goes right back to the drug thing. They can take TVs and stuff. Most people aren't keeping their serial numbers off TVs. They're going to take those down to the pawn shop. They're going to pawn those. They're going to get those money that are going to go out and buy their dope with them. So, yep. Let's emphasize on one thing also. In the event, let's say you go buy a new weed whacker television, don't put the box out at the end yes. of the road for no, the car. That's the biggest advertisement that you can put, put it in on neighbor's <laughs> car. <laughs> no, don't do that either. But, okay. but cut it up so you don't, it's not <laughs> obvious. <laughs> I live in Warren's for most of my young adult life. We moved out here 12 years ago. Love the peace and quiet. Yes, dirt roads are rough on your cars, mm -hmm. but that's okay. I can survive with that. What I did notice, driving around, there are a lot of homes that are secluded. Oh, very You can't good. see off the road. Mm -hmm. There are some homes that are so far back off the property that if anything is going on, nobody driving yeah, past this road can notice. You're not going to see it. Now, when living in the city all those years, I found that if it was posted somewhere, because it was suburbia, mm -hmm. you would post it in your front door window or your back door window, alarm service or neighborhood yeah, watch, and, and things that like works. that. But out here, that's not going to work because mm -hmm. that perpetrator is going to have to go all the way up your driveway onto mm -hmm. your property if you're you going to do that, that you, got, you got to put it at the end of the driveway, like put it in your front yard. What I was going to say, is it possible that we could, as a group, Neighborhood Watch, canvas the people who live in Casco Township for donations, and like the signs for Richmond schools, mm -hmm. Neighborhood Watch, in effect. Not everybody needs to have one in their front yard, but if every four other houses going down the road. People drive by, case in it, and see, oh, neighborhood what? Forget you, I'm not even gonna go there. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, that's a great idea. That, As that, a deterrent. That, that kind of goes back to some of the stuff we're seeing too. When they're, when they're hitting an area, they're not hitting one house on the road. They're driving down that area, finding the most open one they can with the most people gone, right. and hitting five or six houses for small items, and then they're gone. Right, and so the that's, secluded So doing something right. like that would absolutely be a great idea. Okay, I, I just thought, yep. I, Yes, sir. Are you doing anything to screen uh, the pawn shops around that are selling um, this? Because uh, I've yep. had some, I've had a, an <coughs> issue right yep. or, uh, and actually are, found them there. Yeah, to buy them back. From oh, I, I hate that rule, but yeah. I can't change that. One, but um, our detective bureau has a system, and some of the road guys do, some of them don't. I use it, uh, especially when I was working in Algonac. Great tool. It's called Leads Online. All these pawn shops now have to post their thing. It's a law enforcement database. So that's a great thing. If you have serial numbers, photos, anything of any of these items, I can actually go onto this computer system, enter in what was taken from you know from your residence, and I can put a flag on that. So even if it's not popping up immediately, I can leave that sit there for a month 
And as soon as somebody pawns something that resembles that item, it's going to give me an alert, and I can look at it. Detectives use it all the time. And you just need a, a photo, lot of or yeah, like if, if you get existing <coughs> electronics and stuff, write down your serial numbers. Keep those. You know, a lot of people don't. They throw all the paperwork out and be like, whatever, and you're done with it. But is there a way to track who's selling it? I mean, if you're seeing a guy come in once a week, yep. no, they, they, when this pawn, 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 our pawn shop yeah. form, when we get it on this computer system, it has their fingerprint a photocopy of their ID, their address, their phone number, we have everything. So I've used it a couple of times to solve cases where, you know, we've gotten the property back and I know our detective bureau uses it all the time. And it's like, yep, there we go. And I got everything I need right there. Because most of the stuff is not getting pawned locally. It's going down to Detroit. It's going down to that area. It's not getting pawned around. Here. Not locally normally. No. Nope. And uh, that system even works online like we can use it for uh, to a limited extent, like eBay and some of the other uh, online sites. So, yep, our detective bureau uses that all the time. It's a great tool we have. So, yes, sir. Green line, I live on Meisner. How often do you patrol Casco, like just up and down the street? We're through all the time as much as we can be, just depending on the call load, because of our limited manpower. Oh, um, once a week? Oh, no, it's more than that. I mean, you're going, we're going through at least two, three times a night. I mean, I, I hit the whole, when I, like, tonight I'm, I'm the south car, so <coughs> I run, crash it down south, and I'll, I'll get everywhere I can throughout the night, just depending on the call load, though. If we're getting hammered with calls, it makes it a little bit more difficult just to, you know, cruise the back roads, but um, we try to get around everywhere as much as we can just to looking for suspicious activity. That's the biggest deterrent. Yep. But that yeah. but that goes back to the kind of the same thing too where I might not be in that area, so if you see it, call me so I can get there. You know. Okay. So, yes sir. Can we uh, get everybody to get their cell phones out and, and share the uh, non emergency number that will get them to dispatch yep. on the overnight hours? Yes. Until everybody's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you just call the normal number, you're going to get an answering machine that's going to knock you out. Yeah, 1700 <laughs> is not the way to go. It's close to that, though. It's going to be 987 1744. One more time. 987-1744. That's going to get you right to our central dispatch, but not emergency number, so... What's yeah. this 800-462-7111? Uh, they got like three different numbers they used. I always use 1744. 987-1744. Yep. Yeah. 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 That'll put you right up to central dispatch. So. Okay. Yeah, um, when my house got broken, I was impressed. The the sheriff's department; those guys were here quick. I mean, I was you know when you find your house get broken and you're running on pure adrenaline. I was waiting on the road, and it seemed like 20 minutes. They said it was only seven minutes, and it was right. They were showing. Yeah, for one area, you know, that's pretty quick. Yeah, they're at Grash and Watto. It's amazing. My house pretty in seven minutes. So. Non yep, non emergency number. So, <laughs> and if it is emergency, yeah. by all means, yeah, call 911 if it's an emergency, please. <laughs> yep, that's the other one. There's three of them. So, yeah. 1744 is the one I always give out, and other ones give that one. But, well, I use 8115. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know why they have three different numbers, but they all go to the same thing. So, <laughs> over the same phone. Yep. Yes, sir. Has there been any uh, vehicle description of vehicles that are doing break-ins or people on um, surveillance cameras or anything like that? Uh, we haven't got anything on surveillance cameras. Uh, pickup trucks are the only thing I've got on descriptions for people. Um, that's another great thing. I'm not a huge fan of the surveillance cameras, like the straight-up surveillance cameras, because a lot of times if you want to get that long video, when we by the time we get the video, it's extremely grainy and pixelated trail cameras are the way to go. Right. They take pictures night and day, they're cheap, you set them up, they'll run on their batteries for months and the pictures on them are awesome. Are they and they're kind of one? Uh, no, anyone's. I, I got a $10 one that works great, you know, so you can go from, you know, just how much money you want to spend. We've been finding with the trail cameras, we've been getting a lot better pictures than the other. Yeah, it's still there. It's it's 
Uh, well, it's infrared though, so you aren't going to pick that up with your eye because that's the way they flash. It's not a white flash, it's an infrared flash. Human eye can't pick it up, so yeah, they aren't going to see it. You can you can put it in a tree, you can put it on your porch and hide it in a plant or something. You can put them wherever you want, and I mean, we've been getting really good photos with those. So. Uh, is it true home alarm systems that if you get one installed, um, you a lot of homeowners insurance it kind of makes up for it that you get like a break on that? Um, it's going to depend on your insurance company on that one. Some of them do, some of them don't. So in, that just in your experience, does that deter a lot of crime? Oh yeah. Uh, if you do get an alarm system, make it auto. Don't don't get the silent alarm. You want it where. As soon as they go through the door or whatever, that it's thing's just crazy. squawking. Love that dog barking. Find the loudest one you can get. Wayne's got a good one. Yeah. I mean, there's, well, there's been plenty of times where, I mean, we've got the houses and the front door is obviously kicked open, alarms going off, and they never made it in the house because as soon as that started going, they're gone. Sure. Right. Because they don't want to take the risk. It's like, oh, crap, are they right around the corner? You know? Right. Right. So, yeah, alarm systems are great. But make it loud. <laughs> Dogs are great. Yep, you got a dog in the house. A lot of people ain't going to go in. They're driving around. They're time driving by. They're looking for animals. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're looking for everything. I mean, you know, the sad thing is, a lot of criminals, if they actually dedicated their life to a meaningful cause, yeah. they could probably make a lot of it. But they want to take the easy route and steal somebody else's stuff. So. I mean, when they're doing this stuff, it's the same with the drug dealers, it's the same with any type of criminal. The, most of them are doing their homework on it. They aren't just going in blind. They're driving around, they're casing the house. They might pull halfway into your driveway, see if they got motion lights or anything that come on like that. Um, they're looking for anything they can see because they want, they want it easy. They don't want to work for it. They just want to get in, get it, and get out without getting caught. That's what they're going for. So they are going to cruise through. through. They don't have jobs, so what else do they got to do? They just cruise through the area. And, Look for easy targets. So just don't make yourself an easy Everybody uses it. That is a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's that? What's your, did you uh, say I confronting them if you confront them? I wouldn't confront anybody. Just because you don't know what they have. And you don't know what their motivations are. Well, they don't know what I have either. Well, that's <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I get you on that. What we do now? <laughs> so I'm just saying, what's the... From where can we shoot? <laughs> Can't answer that. <laughs> I would have rather have you stay in the house, and I mean, if, if they come into your house, obviously you have a right to defend yourself and you do what you got to do. But I wouldn't want you going out in the driveway and confronting this. Because the big problem is, you don't know if he's got a couple of buddies with him that are around the corner that you didn't see, you know, because they're, they're they're going three, four at a time. This usually isn't. We'll get them where it's a one-person deal, but you're getting them where it's usually a crew of like three, four people in a car, and and that's a problem. You might come out because you see the one guy by the front, and then there's two other guys that you don't see, and then you wind up getting hurt or killed over over something like that. I'd rather just call 911, get us coming, be a good witness, like get the best description you can have. You can get a license plate off the car when they take off, description of the vehicle, what direction they went. It's pretty tough. Yeah, it's, it is hard, but I'm just, you know, you, you get what you can because that's, that's all helping us out. Even if you just get a, you know, it was a dark colored truck and it went eastbound on, you know, whatever road. That's still going to help us out because that that's limiting me where I don't have to go to the other side of the road. I know, okay, they headed this way, so I'm going to start coming in that way and start you know, canvassing the area and see if I can pick this vehicle up. So, other than, you know, I get out there and you're like, yep, no clue on what it was, no clue which direction it went, that makes it kind of hard because they could have went anywhere. I have no idea. So I'm just trying to You don't have a looking. crystal ball in there. I wish I did. You've got I wish a computer, I did. It, come it would on. Be great. The computer only does so much. <laughs> and the information was three days old. Yes, yes, we get a lot of that too. Well, so. But even three day old is not bad. Three day old is better than nothing. Right. So I I'll, I take what I can get. Right. Um, anybody else? I got a question yeah. for you. I mean, years ago on your website, you used to have like a map on there that would say like a break in. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the old like a dot. Yeah. Yep. Are they going to ever get that back? I honestly don't know. And I think the only problem with that is 
getting somebody and getting the money to have somebody run that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's their hang up on that. I wish they would because the crime maps are awesome. Yeah, you can really all see where stuff's going on. Right. right. Um, I'll talk to my sergeant and see if he can if he can pull them up on his and see if I can't get you guys some copies mm -hmm. for the next time. So. Now, would that be public information? It would, yeah. but if they have them. <laughs> Usually we just put them out if we had them, but I don't know if they still are doing that at all or if they uh, have stopped that. I think it's more due to the the cost of having somebody Time run that business. system. So uh, I was told they switched computer programs yep. or something and this we did. We program that you had isn't compatible no. with the new program. You know, that's I like the old one. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. That'd be yep. very helpful to people to know what's going yeah. on. Oh, and, 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 you know. It's helpful for us too when I can pull up a map and see, you know, I've had five breakings in this yeah. area. Can you scout that a little more? Yeah, absolutely. Or the ones next to it. Yep. So. Well, you folks will start developing hot spots and following up with your sheriff when he comes in. Um, you know, this is an area that's had repeated you know, activity, and they'll, they'll keep extra eye out for that. Yep. Yeah, let us know. You see a car driving by all the time. You know, you guys know most of your neighbors. Man, I don't know that car. That's weird. I've seen that thing drive by three times in the last two days. Get us a description on it. So let us know. We'll check it out. So, I saw you, I saw you had your hand raised back then. Um, do you guys have a number based on just this season alone in Pasco Township? How many break-ins For break -ins? Let me look if I got a full number here. I had that little bit of a breakdown. slow down with cooler weather? How Everything <coughs> slows down in the winter. That's... Okay. Uh, so, for non-forced entries, we have we've had 11 so far. Um, for forced entries uh, or non-forced entries of a residence, like where they're breaking into somewhere where it actually lives, we have a, we've had a total of 15. Is that for the year? 15, 15. for the year so far. Yes. Yep. 15. 15. 15. Not 15. Yeah. 15. In Casco Township or in St. Clair? Casco. This is Casco Township. Okay, now keep in mind, Casco Township is six miles north, six yep. miles east. Six so that's miles that's what we've had for. So yeah. it's not a big area for 15. No. That's a lot. That's what we've had for burglaries, and then our other breakdown would be of, which most of these are people stealing gas from the gas station, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean. Stop it. <laughs> the other stuff's like people stealing stuff out of yards. We've had uh, we've had. 12 of those in Casco, but nine of them are people stealing gas from the gas station. So that kind of breaks right. that number down right. a little bit. Yep. Another problem is, is we also discovered is some people, well, it was I think in June when we had the whole garage sale that went from, you know, front to back. Everybody advertising their goods. That was the perfect time for them to come in. Oh, and everybody can get a good look at what you got. Yep. Always right. keep, you know, diligent on things like that. We're going to have a garage sale here at sale. But for the territory, oh, uh, all I'm trying to say with the Casco Township having 15 mm -hmm. break-ins, whether they were forced or not, in a year. Oh, it's, it's a lot. That's Absol a lot absolutely. for our ter for our absolutely. territory. And now area. some of those some of those have been solved because we did get one of the crews that was coming out of that. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying like there was just 15 and we didn't get anybody because that's not the case. Like we have. We have caught some of these crews that are doing this stuff and put them away. So that's that's kind of going on too. When was the most recent? That you did not give me on the dates. You didn't give me on the dates. You just gave me a general spreadsheet. Sorry, this is for my hey, sergeant. Wait, so. when was the most recent? <laughs> I know you know. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay, so there. This weather change is not affected so far. And I know there are quite a few seniors who are snowbirds. Yep. They come up here in the summer and then they leave for the winter months to the south and they leave their home locked up. Hopefully nobody's going to break in. My in-laws, they have a place in the UP for the summer and then they go to Texas in the winter. They keep a trail camp going on. But the thing is, is that if the neighbors aren't watching out that, that's for a that big, that's a big thing. Snow herd. Definitely so watch those out people we other. need to be notified of so that you know we know that they're leaving and we can help. The neighborhood watch people can help. Yep. I believe since September 21st there were four in Casco and one in Ira. Yep. Oh, 
Say that one more Which I was controlled right by Flame now, so I don't get a lot of those statistics. Yeah, it's just across 26 miles. So, yeah, yep. You know, oh, sorry. You keep track of all of any of the ones that you caught. Are they? Do they actually get locked up? Because I, when I lived in Clinton Township, I was broke into, and they caught the kid that did it. He had another lady's house that he had broken into, and he had other stuff on his record. They gave him a slap on the wrist, sent him to boot camp for 90 days. He did that. Was supposed to pay us money, some restitution for some of the stuff he took, and um, was on probation. Court system, unfortunately, but I know two of the groups we have have got have got time. Some time. Okay, yeah, because this guy, up to this day, he's still out running. Got a slap on the wrist and had a lot of other stuff. And he's still out running free. And they told me when I called to check on him, probably four years later. That when they caught up with him, he was going to prison. Well, I checked on him recently, and he's still yeah, up there. Yeah, the same story from the book. Yeah, identical. Yep. So the people that you have caught, mm -hmm. okay, is there anything particular? Because they're not going to be in jail forever. Some kind of description, some kind of age. They were driving a truck. Whatever. They were driving a truck. Most of them are in their mid twenties, and they aren't from around here. They're all from down in the city, coming up here. They're all jumping on the freeway, coming up. Coming up 94, coming into our small areas, stealing what they can, getting back on 94 and going right, right back. All right, because I have had people mm -hmm. tell me they thought they were coming from the trailer park. No, tra I mean, we do get some from the trailer parks. I'm not going to say that. We do have a lot of them that are still, you know, locals. They're from the counties. But the ones we're catching a lot of them, they're, they're out of town. Okay. And that's what the detective bureaus kind of seem to do. So. It kind of seems like a long way to go steal a TV from one person's house, though, from Detroit all the way to here. Well, they are stealing just one TV, though. They're going to a bunch of houses. houses. But they're taking small things and tools and little things that they can pawn, so they're not taking washers, dryers, refrigerators. They're not backing trucks in your driveway. They're taking small stuff, but... It seems, I think it seems that we always point the finger at Detroit, but I mean, 45 miles to come and steal a hundred dollars worth of stuff with forty dollars worth of gas. you know I think it's more I think it's more I think it's more local that are coming out to the house of stealing Some this stuff locals, but a lot of the ones we caught are not from you but the ones that you have you know haven't caught is a, is a different scenario but it just seems like a long distance for for 50 miles you know to not on a freeway get five no. TVs that you're gonna get what 50 bucks no. for I mean it doesn't it doesn't make sense but. I think we need to look more locally for. Well, you, you we look at we look at everything. I'm right. just giving you what we've seen. So I understand. I understand. You could go 30 miles up and hit Chesterfield Township, and that's just as bad as Detroit these days. I mean, it, absolutely, sir. I agree with you on that. But yeah. take a look at what's going on. Also, with that gentleman mentioned before, what your judges are doing when somebody gets prosecuted, and it, and you're directly related to that case or know somebody is, follow that case. You can go on the Sinclair County talk. Uh, court dockets and see where that case is. See where that judge is. These are elected officials. And if you don't like the way they, because these guys do their job, they get them locked up, but it's up to the prosecutor and the judge to see where the case goes. And, and, the, and the prosecutor, Mike Wendley, know him very well, but he's an elected official as, as well. You guys need to form together, have your neighborhood watch, write a letter to Mike Wendley and say, we, we are strong on crime, you know, breaking the errors, we want you to be forceful on this and prosecute these guys with extra strength. Yep. I just had a quick question because yeah. something struck me as odd a while back. There was um, a man and a woman that came to my door saying they wanted to test my water. Was that an actual thing or was that? That was an actual thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been on my mind ever since. And I started hearing about all the breakages. And I'm like, when you get that, if you feel kind of weird about it, call us. I mean, I'm at home with my two kids and my dog. I normally let the dog hit the door first. So. When, I, when, I <laughs> when I worked in Algonac, like they'd call on, you know, people come to DTE, everything like that. Nine times out of ten when I found them, that's exactly what it was. But it's that tenth time right. where right. it's not, and then that's how it goes. Yeah. So, just, yep. you know, I don't get when I was in Clinton Township, which I got ripped off, we, I kind of helped get a neighborhood watch going there. And what they had there was, when these people come around like that, they had to have a, a badge from the township. So if they came to your door and they didn't have that badge pinned on their shirt, you knew they weren't supposed to be there, then you could call. Let them know you got somebody at your door that ain't. And that, that's something you guys can work on with your township. You have a, you have a watch or a patrol. So we, we have a normal just watch like you guys. Just have a watch. But the differences between us and you guys, we actually pay for sheriff services in here on the shared ser services in Newcastle, I believe so. We when we pay thirteen thousand a year, but after ten o'clock we're in the same shared service program. You 
that just date type controls for us. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't want my taxes right. Well, nobody wants that. <laughs> I don't think there's a soul in the room that wants that. Any more questions from anybody? Oh, back my experience. They told me when it broke in, they says it was kids who did it, and they're in the house when they pull it, you pulled in the driveway, just how things were dropped. Because they used the pillowcases as loot bags, yep. and one of them was dropped on the floor. And a, they lot of, a lot of the car ones we're getting, where they're getting the cars, stealing change, stealing just phone yeah. charges. Yeah. Like using my garbage stealing. cans. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that. You can kind of tell a lot of the times when you get there, it's like, yeah, this was somebody seriously, you know, looking to steal everything they could, or this is some stupid kid. You know, I'm really surprised that someone even got shot by <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. We don't know what we got. Not that you've heard. That's what I asked you. Yeah, no, I'm not. Oh, that one didn't go reported. <laughs> but that goes back to these guys are doing their homework. You know, they're they're going through the neighborhood. They're looking at, you know, they're looking during the day. If there are there people outside? Are there dogs outside? Do they have that? You know, do they have that alarm sign in the front yard? Does it look like they have an alarm system? Do they have motion lights? Do they, have, you know? What time are they leaving to go to work? What time are they getting home? They're doing their homework. Right. You that's know, what like, they did with us. Yep. And that's, you know, like I said, if they dedicated themselves to a worthwhile profession, they'd probably all do a great job, but instead they're doing this. So, so Wayne, since you are the constable for the town of Chef, hypothetically, if any one of us sees a suspicious vehicle, mm -hmm. okay, we're on our way to work. We're not going to meet up with you. You don't have to. Okay. Should we contact Wayne and let him forward this information on you? Just, just like call them. Like, or just you call just them call that non-emergency number and be like, hey, I saw this car. This is what I got. I'm heading to work. I can't follow it. Last direction I saw it heading was this way. Okay. You know, and we'll have it. We'll come down and check it out. So. Okay. Yep. And I know that works because I had I reported the guy by email because there was a man that was coming out of probably Marine City on my way to work every morning on. 26 mile, he was driving down the wrong side of the road to pass everybody and he ran people off the road. I got an email back one morning from the sheriff that was emailing with me saying, you're going to be happy we busted him. Yep, we follow they up got on, him. We do, we oh, follow I, up on all the I had a description okay. of his truck well, and his plate number. Sure, because yep. this is a suspicious so vehicle I've seen three or four times going down the road. Yeah, we are just blowing that stuff off. I mean, okay, we're, we're going to answer, answer, okay. answer every single one of those calls. When okay. we come into dispatch, dispatch is going to, you know, they're going to send the first available unit and we're going to go down and check that out. So, yep. I just had one more question because it just popped in my head. Um, we're talking a lot about burglaries and stuff, but something I wanted to bring up was child abductions. A lot of kids have been going missing lately. A lot of people have been going missing lately. What is being done for that? Do we have anything for that? Because, I mean, Obviously, in, in, I have. In this county, we actually have a federal task force that works on okay. human trafficking. Yeah. So that's all they do. They're undercover. That's all they do. Go, go, shoot. Well, no, I mean, I just, you know, yep. I've, I've heard a lot of, oh, kids were playing in the front yard, and then all of a sudden, you know, the next day they're out there playing and they're gone. Like Which Some of those are unsubstantiated, like they, you know, Facebook right. stuff and stuff like that, where no, it didn't actually happen. Somebody's trying okay, to. Okay, so as far as numbers go, like, is okay. St. Clair County down for that? Yeah, we don't. Okay. I mean, because like, like you said, I've seen it on Facebook of kids missing, and you don't some know. Some of the ones we have found have turned out to be where they were on the okay. front of Kidney, where it started, it did, it started off as we're working a kidnapping case, right. and then it goes full circle, and it's, yeah. it's not a kidnapping case. So. Um, we're, we're down on those. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's not happening. No, it's yeah. No, I, I just wanted to know where St. Clair County sat yeah. on that because, like you said, you see it on Facebook all the time of, you yep. know, everybody's missing it. With, with some of those, I might up reading them like, that never happened. Like, yeah. I, was, I was working that day. That didn't happen. So, <laughs> some of that's just people yeah. trying to throw on the, the rumor mill there. So. <laughs> never always believe what you I just, I just have one that's off the subject, too. You got your you got that traffic division too? Uh, we have a secondary road spot that just does traffic. Okay, because uh, since they since they've uh, blocked 
26 mile road, mm -hmm. I live on Meisner, and these cars are flying and they're doing that. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, they 60, are. 70 oh, miles an hour. Uh, yeah. I told the other officer, deputy, about a year ago, he wanted to park his car in my driveway and sit there and, and tag them on. He could. But they are flying. I mean, you can't, I mean the residents that live on Meisner Road are used to people driving somewhat fast, yep. but not not that 70, fast. Not 70 cars in a row and, uh, within an hour. They're going drag up the racing boxes, out there. And, and these Danger. cars aren't even slowing down. I'll, I'll definitely trucks. patrol the area more and then um, so I'll, the I'll, let, I'll let our yeah. bosses yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. And if you do get something like that, where it is, you know, like like a traffic issue like that, where they're speeding or anything like that, you can call, once again, you can call up to the main office, you know, during business hours, you can call uh, that 987-1700 number and get a hold of um, one of our supervisors. And we have a thing that we put out every day for us, it's called the hot sheet. It shows us all the crimes that have happened, like the major crimes that have happened in the county right. the evening before and everything else. And we'll actually put that right on the hot sheet, like need more traffic enforcement at this area. And we'll do that, like oh, we'll do it all the time. We'll come up. Because it's only gonna be two weeks according to yep. the supervisor, but they are flying yep. through and us people are trying well, to go through the mailbox. Yeah, and the they're bus not filming it and the bus is coming. I mean, the other day the, the, the trash guys were trying to pick up trash and they were whizzing by down like crazy. Yep, but yeah, we'll do that. They'll put that speed board down there. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure like you guys have seen those. Right, the yep. digital ones. Yep, they'll put that down there and they'll have, they'll have us do more traffic enforcement in that area. So, yep. It's worse is right now with the bridge work on the highway. Mm -hmm. All the traffic is on Springborn Road. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say not all, but most of it because it's going around. Yeah. Yeah. And you get four Springboard cars in the of the woods, and some idiot's going to pass all four cars on the sidewalk. I've seen it. I watch it every night. Yep. We need somebody out there in the from about three o'clock on. <laughs> And watch. I that's another thing. I mean, that's, that's another fine. thing. I mean, we do do the best we can on that. I'm giving extra traffic control the area, but it, it becomes a manpower issue. Where there's just there's not enough of us due to the call load to just you know we we try to do our best, but just some days it's just. Starting about four thirty in the morning, going west. But yeah, I'll let my I'll let my supervisor from about three o'clock to four o'clock. Going to east down. But I'll check out there and I'll let my supervisor know he can put it on the hot sheet. But if you guys do have any problems with that, I mean, just, just give us a call and let us know. Because that's another thing, like, we can hit traffic areas, but there's certain spots where it's like, okay, they're running this stop sign constantly. Well, I might not know that, but you see it every day. So just give us a call. You know, we'll, we'll go out there and we'll, we'll put some traffic on <laughs> And that's kind of making it hard to watch out for suspicious vehicles right now because we're getting so many, yeah, so so many, many in the area that the it's 24-7. Yeah. I, I get home at 2 a.m. in the morning every day and it's still 20 cars down my road. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, it's nonstop. Oh, flying nonstop. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. When you do the road patrols in the middle of the night, do you do hard cars or unmarked cars? We do have some of our unmarked guys down here, uh, some of our undercover guys down here, be, you know, looking for the beating people. Uh, so they kind of do their thing, but then the rest are marked. Like I marked uh, the rest of us, the normal road patrols marked. That's just because we get called for, you know, calls. I can't be rolling up in an unmarked car. So. Somebody else? That was me. Okay. Now it's our speed limit's on the gravel road. So I looked it up. They are 55, right? Yes. There's nothing we can do about lowering yeah. that. You can. <laughs> because when I walk my dog during the day, I take my, it's like the Stephen King movie Pet Cemetery around here. I have almost gotten hit several times wearing a bright orange jacket. They just you can they take off. The, yeah. yeah, it's 55 or as conditions. Well, well they don't slow yeah. down even if they're bouncing and all over I think the it's place. a thing of the township supervisor, the sheriff, and a member of the state police. Yep. Yeah, you have to look at it. But so. you also, if you get online to the U.S. or uh, state legislator in Lansing and follow House Bill number 4415 and support that and by calling like uh, Pamela Hornberg, I believe you're your representative in this area, that House Bill 4415 is going to allow townships to set speed restrictions on your gravel roads. And it's going to allow you to have less time 
um, and money, also grading those roads because the gravel is going to keep better on them. So watch House Bill 4415. I'm, I got a thing to say what Dan said too, but get on it one. Get on that app next door, become a part of that Casco Township. If you see any suspicious activity, post it on there, and all your neighbors can see it, and they can be on the lookout for that suspicious vehicle or something. Yeah. You know. Is it spelled just like next? Next door. Next door. Okay. I got it on my phone. Yeah, you put, a, put the app on your phone. And so if somebody posts something that comes right over there, and you can see it. You get alerts. Yeah, you get alerts. This is for like the surrounding area. It's not a Facebook where it goes around the world. You know, it's just Casco. No, it's Casco and the surrounding area. So, anybody got any questions, comments? Are we going to start? Like, is this going to be like a monthly meeting thing, or? That's what I'm planning on. Yeah. Okay. You know, this tonight's mainly like an informational meeting. Get some information. And we'll see where it takes us. Yeah, appreciate thank, everybody coming. Wayne, thank you for uh, spearheading this in the township here. Yeah. Long time coming. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we seen the need months. for it because everybody was getting ripped off, and it's not a good thing. Give yeah, a round of support for Wayne, please. Yeah. Anybody got anything else to say? If not, <coughs> just a few announcements as everybody has seen in, in the times here, like I spoke previously, we, we got the money through the St. Clair Highway Bridge. Uh, a lot of things took place after that. The soil borings are complete on it. Um, I talked to Mike Clark and Kirk Westing, Managing Director, St. Clair County Road Commission. Uh, the preliminary engineering is complete at this point in time. Uh, the surveyors are out there getting the last of the final numbers together. and. Uh, like I said, they have the money. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a bidder before Christmas time period, and they're going to work continuously until they get the, the job done. The problems that you're probably seeing right now on Marine City Highway with David Davis Bridge, when the highway was so open, is why are there only three people working on that whole job? They're never going to get it done. The problem is right now, they're having a problem getting the precast concrete for the spans. So they're trying to do their pile driving, whatever they can do, until that shows up. Keep in mind, in St. Clair County, we, we are one of only two counties in the entire state that has the most bridges. It's us in Wayne County. We have 336 functioning bridges in St. Clair County. That's a lot to keep going. But, yeah, but also in, in our work of obtaining the money, as I came in front of you guys at one point in time in Casco, looking for a grant to do jointly to help with uh, the businesses to keep functioning. Well. It progressed a, a more positive stage than that. Uh, myself and trustee John Golan uh, went to the county planners and, and asked for help in the, in the mapping and grant writing for us to do jointly. And uh, one of the senior planners says, well, I think you guys belong to the EDA, don't you? I said, well, most, we most definitely do. He uh, made a phone call and Dan Casey, who's uh, the head of the EDA, uh, kept the door open for us at well after 5 o'clock and we spoke for well over an hour and he seen what we were trying to do. He says, you don't need a grant. He says, I'm getting interviewed by, of course, Paul Dingham your Channel 6 group and he is working with your individual businesses in Casco Township and the ADR group to get them some exposure and get them some commercials free of charge so they have a record year while this bridge is being reconstructed. Talking about the bridge, right? Yes, sir, sorry, right here in St. Clair Highway. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bridge on St. Clair Highway. Yes. Right. Yes. I thought you were talking about the bridge. I, I was, but they, but they had a problem getting the bridge. Hopefully, we don't get into the situation with, with us on, on, on the Bell River. Um, talking to Mike Clark, we're, they're, they're swaying two different opinions that they were going to beef up the spans and do away with the center pier. If we do away with the center pier, it cuts back on our environments because we got to do the studies on the dragon fries and the crayfish and every god knows what. And so that's yeah, going to take that, that's, yeah, that's going to take the longest out of it. But uh, we're, we're in good shape. And, and one of the things I did ask uh, Kirk and Mike Clark is it, it was a hard thing to get this money. 
we want some of it to stay locally for local 324 uh, out of the Marine City Yard 4 and uh, Labor's Union 1191, uh, and also fuel suppliers and material suppliers so they can have a good Thanksgiving, good Christmas, good New Year's. We want that in our community. Right. Good. Please help yourself to refreshments and get to know your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for coming. And it's a little Bell River Bridge. It's, I mean, you go all year.